हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल कैन यू हेयर माई सॉन्ग कैन यू हेयर मी गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाँ यस यस ओके लेट मी शेयर इन द स्क्रीन Okay, we'll start uh, our today's talk on uh, introduction and general characters of bryophytes. Well, we know we studied in the uh, previous lectures the classification of lion kingdom proposed by scientist Eisler, and according to him, bryophyta group bryophyta and the plants in that group, which are called as bryophytes, belong to the higher cryptogams. and we studied that cryptogams are non flowering plants seedless plants which are of two types lower cryptogams and higher cryptogams on, on cryptogams on the basis of certain, certain characters primitive characters and advanced characters those plants which show advanced character in the cryptogams are called as higher cryptogams and these characters are such as uh, the plant body which is thalloid in case of lower cryptogams here it may be slightly differentiated or differentiated into the organs like root stem and leaves whereas in case of uh, lower cryptogams it is thallus undifferentiated plant body without root stem and leaf system so next character we studied regarding sex organs which are always multicellular in case of higher cryptogams with a sterile layer of jacket cells or jacket layer of sterile cells that means the sex organs male and female sex organs they are always multicellular and they are covered by protected by a sterile layer of jacket cells that is another characteristic feature of higher cryptogams of which or to which the bryophytes also belong another character we studied the embryo phase is always present in the life cycle of higher cryptogams the zygote after its formation divides redivides by mitotic cell divisions and it forms a multicellular structure that is called as embryo and this embryo then gives rise to the new plant body so embryo formation is always present in the life cycle of higher cryptogams so all these characters uh, that is the slightly differentiated plant body or multicellular sex organs with jacket and the presence of embryo stage in the life cycle are shared by bryophytes because these are higher cryptogams they belong to higher cryptogams that we studied in uh, while studying the classification of plant kingdom we also studied at that time that higher cryptogams are of two types bryophytes and pteridophytes here we are discussing about bryophytes so what is the difference between bryophytes and pteridophytes or as to what plants these are what are bryophytes so when uh, we consider algae the first thing that comes in our mind is that they are aquatic habitat and uh, when we consider the higher plants like spermatophytes or seed seed plants gymnosperms and angiosperms or pteridophytes uh, and these plants are terrestrial plants so plants can grow in these two extreme conditions two extreme habitats the first in water and the second on land or on soil so those plants which are growing in uh, water are called as aquatic plants whereas those which grow on land which grow on soil these plants are known as terrestrial plants so plants may be aquatic for example algae or plants may be terrestrial for for example pteridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms but in between these two extreme habitats that is aquatic plants and terrestrial plants there are certain plants which grow in uh in in the conditions where these two meet each other where the land meet meets the soil such a conditions are uh, marshy areas or moist and humid damp places and such a conditions or such a habitat is called as amphibious habitat and those plants which grow in such a areas are called as amphibians or amphibious plants or amphibians of plant kingdom and exactly bryophytes are 
the amphibians of plant kingdom. These are very small, simple, soft plants which grow in the habitat which is intermediate between the aquatic condition and the terrestrial condition. So they are called as amphibians of plant kingdom. These bryophytes are small, simple, soft plants, green, autotrophic, maybe thalloid or slightly differentiated plant body. And these are the plants called as non-vascular plants. These are soft plants due to absence of vascular tissues. Vasculature is absent. Xylem is absent. That is water conducting tissue. Phloem is absent. That is food conducting tissue. So due to absence of the vascular vasculature, these plants are called as non-vascular plants. These are non-vascular higher cryptogams, whereas pteridophytes are vascular higher cryptogams. These are soft plants because mechanical tissues like sclerenchyma or uh, such a tissues which give mechanical strength and support to the plant body are usually absent. Usually the tissues or cells which are present in the bryophyte plants are simple thin-walled parenchymatous cells. So these are soft plants. Okay, non-vascular plants, soft plants. So small, simple, soft. These are uh, lower in the evolution than pteridophyta and more advanced in the evolution than algae. So that is a quick uh, introduction about bryophytes. Now we'll switch on to the general characters of this plant, bryophyta or bryophytes. In the life cycle of bryophyta plant, there are two phases. One phase is called as the gametophyte and the second phase or another phase is known as the sporophyte, gametophyte and the sporophyte. The gametophyte is long living, independent, dominant phase in the life cycle. It is green, autotrophic, free living, independent, dominant and long lived phase in the life cycle. As it is green, it is autotrophic, it can prepare its own food material. So it has not to depend on any other sources. So it is independent phase, it is dominant phase. It is not dependent on any other phase in the life cycle. It is long lived phase in the life cycle. So this is the main phase called as the gametophyte phase in the life cycle. The second phase is the sporophyte. This is exactly opposite to the gametophyte. It is not free living, it is dependent, it is non-dominant and it is short-lived phase in the life cycle. So the two phases are gametophyte and the sporophyte in the life cycle. Gametophyte is the independent, is an independent, dominant and long-lived phase in the life cycle, whereas the sporophyte is dependent, non-dominant and short-lived phase in the life cycle. We are going to discuss in quite detail after uh, some slides. But at this stage, you just, for instance, you keep in mind there are two phases, gametophyte, and the sporophyte in the life cycle of bryophyta plants. Here, in case of bryophyta, the plant body, the interesting fact is that the plant body itself, the vegetative plant body itself is known as the gametophyte. The plant body of bryophyta plant is called as the gametophyte. Now, there are certain meaning of why the plant body is called as gametophyte or what is the meaning of the term gametophyte. When we refer to to any structure of the plant, whether it is a plant body or any other structure of the plant, it is called as the gametophyte. Phyte means plant, phyta means plant. Phyte means plant and gameto means the referring to the gametes. So that structure or that plant body or that plant structure or plant part which bears or which produces gametes, male gametes and female gametes inside the bag-like structures known as gametangia are called as gametophyte. That structure is known as gametophyte. The structure or the plant body which produces gametes, male and female gametes is known as gametophyte. And these gametes are produced in a bag-like structure and these bags are called as gametangia. Angia means bags. Angia means bags. Angium means a bag. Gametangium means the gamete producing bag. It may be Male gametangium producing male gametes, female gametangium producing female gametes. And the male gametangium is also called as male sex organ. And the female gametangium is also called as female sex organ. So female sex organ produces female gametes and the male sex organ produces male gametes. And this gametangia, that is sex organs, are present on the plant body itself. So such a plant body on which the gametangia are present in which gametes are produced is known as gametophyte. So that is the meaning of the term 
gametophyte. The plant body is called as gametophyte when it is gamete producing, when it is gametangia bearing. And therefore, obviously, as the gametes are the parts of sexual reproduction, this plant body is sexual plant body. Gametophyte, when we say that the plant body is gametophyte, it means it is a sexual plant body. It is producing gametes, male and female gametes. Another important factor, uh, cytological factor or genetic factor uh, is that such a plant bodies are cytologically or cell biologically haploid, consisting of a single set of chromosome. Each cell of such a gametophytic plant body is haploid cell. It consists of a single set of chromosome. You have studied in your lower classes. When there are two sets of chromosome, one coming from the father side, paternal side, and other from the mother side, maternal side, then the set becomes uh, deployed, deployed, uh, deployed structure. When there is a single set, then it is called as haploid structure. So all cells in this plant body, gametophytic plant body, are haploid. So when uh, the cytologically the plant body is haploid, it is called as gametophyte. So what we studied. What is gametophyte? The plant body, which is gamete producing, which is sexual, and which is cytologically haploid, is called as gametophyte. And in case of bryophyta, the vegetative plant body is always gametophyte. This is the characteristic feature of bryophyta. This is the salient feature of the group bryophytes, bryophyte plants. The vegetative plant body is gametophyte. Now, this plant body, which is a gametophyte, it may be slightly differentiated as in case of lower cryptogams like algae and fungi and such a plant body is called as thalloid. So the plant body in bryophyta plants may be thalloid in some bryophyte, in some primitive bryophytes it is thalloid or in some other bryophytes which are advanced bryophytes which are uh, more evolved than the primitive bryophytes the plant body may be folios as you can see here. The plant body may be thalloid that is undifferentiated without root stem and leaves, or it may be folios, that is leaf-like appendages. That is, it is slightly differentiated plant body with root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structure. The plant body of bryophyta, higher bryophyta, advanced bryophyta is called as folios as it is differentiated, as it is slightly differentiated, as it is having the root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structures, and not true root, stem, and leaves. True roots, true stem, and true leaves are always absent in bryophyte, whether they are advanced or primitive. In primitive bryophyta, plant body is thalloid, dorsiventrally flattened. And in case of higher bryophyta, it is differentiated, it is slightly differentiated into root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structure. Why? Why the word like? Why the word like is there? Why there are no true roots, stem, and leaves? Because it is a part of gametophyte. It is haploid plant body. Okay. And secondly, there is absence of vasculature. Vascular tissues are absent. Therefore, these structures are not true roots, stem, and leaves, but these are root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structure. Very small plant bodies, either microscopic or uh, having some height of few millimeters or maximum height will be 30 centimeters to 60 centimeters. Very soft, simple uh, amphibious plants are found in case of bryophyta. So here we have studied bryophyta plant body is gametophyte and that gametophyte or plant body may be thalloid or it may be differentiated into root-like, stem-like and uh, leaf-like structures. Okay, uh, the next point is uh, the thalloid plant body which is undifferentiated, it is found in some plants like Rixia, Mercantia, these are the examples of bryophyte which are considered as primitive bryophytes. And there are some examples of bryophyte like Finaria, Sphagnum, these are commonly known as mosses, moss plants. These are having folios plant body differentiated into central axis, that is a stem-like structure with uh, root-like structures at the base and leaf-like structures on the central axis. So that is slightly differentiated plant body. It is also found in some advanced bryophyta. Now the root-like structures are very small hair-like structures which are present at the base of plant body. They are meant for attachment to the thallus, sorry, attachment to the substratum as well as for absorbing water and minerals from the substratum of soil. So these structures, 
are performing the functions of roots fixation and absorption and such a root like structures are known as rhizoids rhiza means roots and oids means like rhiza means roots oids means like root like root like structures hair like structures are present true roots are absent in bryophyta but root like structures are present and these are called as rhizoids and these rhizoids are unicellular and unbranched in case of primitive bryophytes like rickshia and mercantia whereas in case of uh, ferns advanced bryophytes the rhizoids are multicellular and branched structures in finaria sphagnum uh, that is the characters anatomically the plant body of bryophyte is very simple parenchymatous and as we studied there is absence of vasculature there is absence of mechanical tissues therefore plant bodies become soft and non vascular therefore these are also called as non vascular cryptogams bryophyte plants are called as non vascular soft plants non vascular land plants well next character is sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is oogamous now there are different types of reproduction uh, made in lower cryptogams like isogamous anisogamous oogamous but for instance you study you, you remember here that this is the uh, these types or this classification is based on the characteristic features or uh, evolutionary features isogamous is as the word suggests iso means same gamous gametes the same gametes male and female gametes are similar in size shape structure behavior so that type of reproduction is called as isogamous whereas oogamous reproduction is advanced type of reproduction in which the gametes are different morphologically as well as physiologically male gamete is smaller motile female gamete is larger non motile awaiting for male gamete to come and fertilize it and these gametes are formed in a specialized specially modified structures called as sex organs male sex organs and female sex organs which are very much are different from each other and therefore we can easily distinguish distinguish we can easily differentiate we can easily identify it. okay that this is male sex organ this is female sex organ this male sex organ is producing male gametes female sex organ is different from male sex organ and it is producing female gamete so this type of sexual reproduction is known as oogamous type of sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction is always oogamous this is another salient feature of bryophyta plants this is the distinguishing character it distinguishes bryophytes from lower cryptogams or thallophytes in which the uh, sexual reproduction may be isogamous or isogamous or oogamous type in case of algae and fungi but here in case of bryophyta sexual reproduction is always oogamous type okay uh, so the male sex organ is known as anthridium it is also called as male gametangium because it produces male gametes so it is a bag like structure it is a male reproductive structure of bryophyta plant it is the male sex organ it is a male gametangium or it is a male reproductive organ and that is structure or organ is called as anthridium and it produces male gametes whereas the female sex organ or female gametangium or female reproductive structure in bryophyta plants is known as archegonium anthridium and archegonium male sex organ is anthridium and female sex organ is archegonium and these sex organs are always multicellular with a sterile layer of jacket cells that we studied that is the characteristic feature of higher cryptogams sex organs are always multicellular with a sterile layer of jacket cells so both anthridia and archegonia they are multicellular structures present in the plant body and these sex organs are present in the plant body itself these gametangia are found in the plant body and therefore plant is called as gametophyte because they produce gamete and such a gamete producing plant body such a sexual plant body of bryophyte is known as gametophyte anthridium male sex organ archegonium female sex organ we'll see the structures of these sex organs in quite detail with the help of some animated uh, slides okay you can see here this is anthridium male sex organ it is a multicellular structure it is a club shaped or ellipsoidal or quite uh, spherical structure having the main part that is called as the body proper of anthridium which is attached to the substrate uh, which, which is attached to the thallus 
or gametophytic tissue, plant tissue, by means of a small stalk. So there are two main parts, the lower very small part that is called as the stalk and the upper spherical club shaped multicellular structure that is called as the body of anthidium. This body is consisting of the central region of cells, multicellular structure and this central region is a fertile region which is surrounded by, you can see here, it is surrounded by some sterile cells and these sterile cells are called as jacket cells. So the anthidium body is covered by, protected by sterile cells at the periphery and these are called as jacket cells. So presence of jacket is another characteristic feature of higher cryptogams. At the very center, there is a mass of fertile cells called as androcytes and each androcyte uh, metamorphosis into or it, 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 it forms male gametes therefore this central region is called as fertile region as it is producing male gametes this is male gamete angium this is male sex organ anthidium the function of anthidium is to produce male gametes and these male gametes also called as anthrozoids or spermatozoids or sperms they are produced at the central region therefore this region is fertile region whereas the peripheral region is sterile region it is not involved in the production of male gametes it is involved in the function of it serves the function of giving protection to the central fertile region and that peripheral region is called as jacket so here at the very center you can see here uh, male gametes are formed each male gamete is a biflagellate structure having two flagella for locomotion uh, and these flagella are of whiplash type so these are these are anthrozoids single is anthrozoid male gametes spermatozoids or sperms so this is a structure of male sex organ anthidium we'll uh, see the structure of archegonium female sex organ well uh, it is uh, again a multicellular flask shaped structure having the upper part which is long elongated slender delicate portion and this portion is called as the neck of archegonium so this is upper part and the lower part or lower portion of the archegonium is quite swollen basal and bag like structure and this is called as the venter of archegonium so archegonium has the upper part called as the neck and the lower part known as the venter well inside the neck there are three to four three to four elongated naked cells and these are called as NCCs that is neck canal cells because they are present inside the canal of the neck therefore they are called as neck canal cells NCCs so neck consists of four to five neck canal cells similarly the venter consists of two cells the upper cell of the venter is smaller and it is called as venter canal cell VCC whereas the lower cell of the venter is larger cell and this larger cell is called as the egg cell that is the female gamete or oosphere or ovum it has different names egg cell or female gamete or oosphere or ovum so production of egg cell or female gamete is the function of archegonium and it has neck and venter neck canal cells venter canal cells and egg cell different type of cells but the main or the most important of all these cells is the egg cell or female gamete and that is produced by archegonium now as this is a multicellular structure you can see here the entire archegonium the neck as well as the venter is surrounded by or protected by many sterile cells and these sterile cells are called as jacket so multicellular sex organs always covered with the sterile layer of jacket cells this is another characteristic feature of bryophyta plants so here female sex organ is also surrounded by or protected by a sterile layer of jacket cells now here you can see the opening of the neck is uh, you can see there it is visible but that opening is always protected by guarded by four cells and these cells are called as the cover cells or lead cells mm. so these cover cells or lead cells they close the opening of the neck of archegonium when it is young when it is immature and this opening is uh, uh, open at the time when the sex organs become mature 
So this archegonium, you can see here, it is attached to the plant body by, by means of a small stalk. So this is the general structure of female sex organ, archegonium, multicellular structure, the function of which is production of female gamete or egg cell. So the next event in the life cycle is fertilization and water is always essential for fertilization. This is another interesting feature of bryophyte. If there is no water, no fertilization can take place and therefore life cycle cannot be completed. Water or moisture is absolutely essential for fertilization and after a shower of rain, water is available, water is retained by the plant body and this water is required for the movement of anthrozoids for the movement of sperms, for the movement of male gametes. As we have studied, male gametes, they are biflagellate structure, having flagella with the help of their flagella, they can swim in a current of water, they can move from anthridium to the archegonium for fertilizing the female gamete. And for their locomotion, for their movement, they require water. Water is also required for the rupture of anthridium. Anthridium is ruptured, anthridium, anthridial wall is broken down with the help of water so that the male gametes are released outside the anthridium and they can move and reach the archegonium. The water is also required for the rupture to open the neck of archegonium. So water is absolutely necessary for the process of fertilization to complete, to take place. So see here, see here what happens. So this is a male sex organ anthridium we have seen. The jacket cells absorb water, they swell and they burst open so that when they are uh, burst, the, it is easy for male gametes to get released outside the anthridium. Okay, so see here, see here. Anthridium is bursting open to release anthrozoids and they get released outside and they swim in the water current and they go towards the neck of archegonium. See here, they have reached here. Many of the anthrozoids or sperm reach and travel and they come to the archegonium, they come to the neck of archegonium, but only one male gamete becomes successful in fusing, in uniting with the female gamete, which is present over here. You can see here. So uh, during the process of fertilization, the neck canal cells and ventral canal cells, they absorb water and they disintegrate. They disappear. Okay, see, they get disappeared. They get Disappear. They are broken down. When they get broken down, uh, they get dissolved in water. They are gelatinous substances and they form a mucilaginous mass. And this mucilaginous mass then tries to force open. You can see it goes in upward direction inside the neck and it tries to force open the cover cells. Sorry. Can you see here? And ultimately, the cover cells are broken down. Okay. When cover cells are broken down, the neck of archegonium gets open. And this, you can see here, this, just a minute, you can see here, okay, see here, see, the flagella is withdrawn, the flagella is removed, and the male gamete is entering the neck, and it is going towards the female gamete, this male gamete is entering towards the female gamete, and then it fuses with the egg cell or female gamete to form a diploid structure and that is called as the zygote. Here, egg cell is converted into zygote. This is the union or fusion between male and female gamete to form a diploid structure and it is called as the zygote. Zygote is a unicellular diploid structure. It is the first cell of sporophyte generation. It divides, re-divides and it forms embryo inside this venter and then from embryo, new plant body or new, sorry, from embryo, another structure that is called as the sporophyte is formed, and how it is formed, the way that we're going to see here. See, the product of fertilization in zygote, a single cell, unicellular, uninucleate, diploid structure, it divides, re-divides to form multicellular, undifferentiated structure, and that is called as embryo. It is also deployed, zygote is deployed, embryo is deployed, and this embryo then forms a new structure, and that is called as sporophyte, which is again a deployed structure, so zygote is the first cell of diploid generation or sporophyte generation. Usually in the sporophyte, when we see the structure of sporophyte here, I have given the diagrammatic structure, see here. There are three distinct regions, foot, seta, and capsule. You can see here, foot is the basal region meant for absorption of food material. Seta is long elongated region. And this capsule 
it consists of central fertile region that produces or that consists of four mother cells and as usual at the periphery there is a sterile region called as capsule wall or jacket so these spore mother cells which are diploid cells they produce spores by means of mitosis and this spore is the first cell of gametophyte it germinates and it develops into the gametophyte and the gametophyte is nothing but the plant body so here you can see here plant body is a gametophyte in bryophyte it consists of anthidium archegonium male and female sex organ that produces male and female gametes called as anthrozoids and egg cell then there is act of fertilization that forms zygote a diploid structure that gives rise to embryo multicellular structure and it forms sporophyte which has food seta and capsule and this capsule consists of spore mother cell which undergoes meiosis to form the spore haploid spore and this spore gives rise to gametophyte uh, in case of lower cryptogams in case of higher cryptogams it forms a filamentous structure called as protonema that is the young juvenile plant body and that plant body then forms adult plant body or the gametophyte so when we join these two events meiosis and fertilization on one side we have haploid generation and on the other side we get diploid generation and this phenomenon of alternation of generation that is uh, this is called as alternation of generation because there is alternation of gametophyte generation with the sporophyte generation or in case of bryophyta so these are some of the uh, references some of the books and websites i have referred thank you for patience patient listening okay okay i will stop sharing the screen okay you can ask your questions if any are there 